Are you still struggling to understand what type of CMS you need for your project? Well, that was exactly the question I was asked this week by one of my friends. So my friend gave me a call and explained to me what his project was and then said, John, what kind of CMS should I use for this? And you know what? That's a really good question. It's something that many of you out there are struggling with today. What type of CMS should you use? So here's a really simple model and a simple walkthrough that I hope helps you understand how to choose a CMS in today's modern world. So let's waste no more time. Let's get to it. So we're going to start this model first with an access of opinionated. On the left, we're going to start with generic, and that's going to include CMSs that cover a wide range of use cases. And on the far right, we have fully opinionated or CMSs that have been designed for very specific use cases. On the vertical axis, we'll just use it to specify a high or low value. So the first line I'm going to plot on this chart is that of flexibility and agility. And in this case, the generic CMSs will have much higher flexibility and much higher agility than the CMSs that are very opinionated with how they're built, what they're built for, and what they're being designed to do. So next, let's plot usability. And what I mean by that is, how user-friendly is the CMS? And how easy is it to use? Also, how sympathetic is it at helping the business user achieve the tasks they are working on? It's no surprise that the opinionated CMS will be much better at the task that it's been designed to do and be far more user-friendly. And therefore, the user experience should be far more intuitive for the business user. The generic CMS may be much more flexible and much more agile, but that often means compromising the user experience. The reason why the more opinionated CMSs are more user-friendly is they've been built for specialist tasks and they control their environment by defining the tech stack, templating languages, how pages are built, the types of components that you can use. Pretty much everything is predefined. This allows us to have specific workflows and WYSIWYG interfaces. The non-opinionated generic CMSs focus on open technologies, particularly APIs, which means they are far more flexible and can be used for far more use cases and it can easily adapt to many diverse channels. But the interface they use for content management will be more universal, more generic. So using this simple model, we can now divide it up and show where each type of CMS sits. So our traditional monolithic web CMSs can be placed on the right of the diagram, as these have been developed into very opinionated CMSs for very specific purposes, such as marketing websites and microsites. This is also the home for all the specialist CMSs, those used for managing native applications, social networking, and even CMSs that have been embedded into e-commerce systems. Using these CMSs is where you get CMS silos across all your different channels. And on the left of the diagram, this is where we get our headless and Mac-based CMSs. Using these cloud-based systems with open technologies, delivering content through microservices and APIs means these systems can be used for almost any content management use case on any deployment architecture. So in the center left, we have our open source CMSs, which are much more flexible because they have open architectures, but as they're not Mac-based, API-driven, cloud-based systems, they are far less agile. Then on the other side, we have our SaaS-based point solutions, which are user-friendly as they're designed for very specific purposes, but they often only come with a limited set of APIs. There is often a gray area between these two types of systems. What's really interesting is how headless CMS is moving more towards the right by using things like composable front ends or building solutions specific to certain verticals, such as e-commerce. This makes them much more intuitive for these markets without losing the flexibility and the power of headless CMS. And similarly, with the web CMSs, they are also trying to become more flexible and adapt to more channels. And to do this, they're adding APIs and becoming decoupled CMSs. And if you want to know more about the differences between headless CMS and decoupled CMS, I put a link in the corner for you on a previous video I did just on that subject. So how can we use this model to actually choose what type of CMS we're actually going to need? So here's a little diagram I've drawn of the scope of a CMS. Now it looks a bit squiggly and a bit messy, but you kind of get the idea. So what I'm going to do is show you how we can use this to apply the model we've just walked through. So obviously web CMS is adapted to building web-based sites and web-based apps. 
and they're not very good at dealing with any other channel and often not that good at dealing with e-commerce web channels. If they've got a decoupled option, they might be able to wing a native app or two, but generally they're good at what they were originally built for. For all of these areas, there will be specialist CMSs that have been specifically designed to deal with the challenges of that particular area. And these are delivered as SaaS-based products. But implementing these means creating silos of content. But what's fantastic about headless and Mac-based CMSs is that they can cover pretty much every single single one of these use cases, they can adapt to every area of CMS. So what are my recommendations? First of all, if you've already got some websites and you're not expected to do any major changes, things are pretty stable and you don't expect to be doing anything in the next year or two, then even if you've got a web CMS, you may as well just stick with it. There's no point moving. Now, if you've got a really simple brand site you want to build and that's the only thing you're going to build and it's the only thing you're going to manage and it only has to be on web, then it makes sense to actually go down a simple SaaS CMS solution, especially when you've only got a small team or even one person managing the content. And I guess I say the same with every area of CMS. If that's the only thing you're doing and it's an isolated use case, then it's probably best to just use a simple CMS, a SaaS-based CMS. If you're going to go beyond one area of CMS, if you're going to have multiple channels spread across different technology sets like native and IoT, and if you need to deliver content consistently across all of these channels, then you need to choose a headless Mac-based CMS. This is even more important if things are rapidly changing in your environment and you need to quickly respond to change. Now, some of you will be asking, well, what about e-commerce? What about if you have a mini CMS built into the e-commerce platform? And this really comes down to the complexity of your business and your content requirements. If you have some sophisticated content requirements where you have to produce large volumes of content that are complex with lots of reuse, or if you have to deliver that content across multiple channels or multiple brand sites, then you'll need a headless CMS, one that can integrate with your e-commerce platform as well as deliver content consistently across all your other channels. It's even more useful if your current e-commerce system is a monolith and you're migrating towards a Mac-based architecture. I've actually done that a lot with Ampliance. As it puts our customers on a path to headless, without throwing away any of the content they produce when switching to a Mac-based architect. So I hope you found that model useful to help you understand what kind of CMS you need to choose for your project. It won't help you identify the exact CMS you're going to use, but it should help you understand what kind of CMS you need for the type of problem you have and the scope of problem that you've got. So if you did find this useful, can you do me one favor? Can you scroll down, press that like button? And if you'd like to see more content like this, why not subscribe? I have loads of great videos talking about headless CMS, headless e-commerce, and all things Mac architecture. But for now, it's time to say thank you, goodbye, and I'll see you next time.